We've done the Western Conference, now it's time for the East. In today's video, I'll be telling you my prediction for the Eastern Conference standings in 2022, starting from the 15th seed and working my way up to number 1. Before we get into these standings predictions, if you're new here and enjoy this video, please be sure to subscribe for more NBA content like this. I'm trying to hit 18,000 subscribers, so all support would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, with that being said, let's get right into these predictions, starting at number 15. Number 15, the Orlando Magic. I'll keep it completely real with you. The Magic look pretty shocking going into 2022. Their future is quite bright, don't get me wrong. There is plenty of young talent on this team that can become something special one day, such as Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, RJ Hampton, Gary Harris, and if healthy, Markel Fultz and Jonathan Isaac. However, I think this team is far too young and inexperienced right now to do any serious damage and simply win a lot of games. The Magic will be fully locked in on development next season and will probably hope to land a top draft pick as well. With the Eastern Conference so deep nowadays and extremely competitive, I honestly struggle to see the Magic making any sort of leap in 2022. So, that's why I have to place them in last place today. I have the Magic winning 15 to 20 games next season. Number 14, the Detroit Pistons. Being honest again, I didn't want to put the Pistons so low. I do feel like they have potential to get a spot in the play-in tournament at best, and I think that with the way that their roster is currently constructed, they should be a competitive side in 2022. However, with that said, like the Magic, I think inexperience and a larger focus on development will come into play in keeping the Pistons down toward the bottom of the Eastern Conference standings. Cade Cunningham should be an elite addition to the team and help the team make improvements from 2021. But again, with such a competitive East, it's really hard for me to place them above some of the teams that are about to follow them. Hence, their positioning today. I have the Pistons winning 20 to 25 games next season. Number 13, the Toronto Raptors. I'm really not sure what to make of the Toronto Raptors right now, but I am pretty confident that they'll miss the playoffs again in 2022. I'm aware that will annoy a lot of people, but after losing Kyle Lowry and not really upgrading the roster much at all over the course of the offseason, I just can't see the Raptors getting back in the playoff hunt seriously. I know that the Raptors should be back playing in Canada for 2022, and that playing in Tampa would have definitely affected their win percentage last season. But for me, there's just too many question marks around this team for me to place them higher confidently. Can Pascal Siakam still be a legitimate or NBA type player and first option offensively for them? Is the team deep enough to compete with other squads around them? I'm just not too sure right now, and while this placement may seem a bit harsh, I just can't make myself place Toronto higher than these next few teams, again, because of all these unknowns. With Masai Ujiri, also an open critic of the play-in tournament, I think Toronto will intentionally fall back a bit if they don't feel they're a real chance to make the playoffs, contributing further to this placement. I have Toronto winning 25 to 30 games next season. Number 12, the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cleveland Cavaliers are an exciting young team going into 2022 bolstering their squad a little bit with additions of Larry Markkinen, Evan Mobley, and more. After heavy trade rumors involving Colin Sexton, they've decided to run it back, and personally, I think that's a good thing. The combination of Sexton and Garland is something I still think is worth testing out, especially with Mobley now in town. So I think with some experimentation and time to mesh, the Cavaliers could become very competitive next season. However, as I've mentioned, the Eastern Conference is as deep as ever with talent, and there are so many teams deserving a playoff spot. For that reason, I feel like a young team like Cleveland is still on the cusp of making a move, but won't be able to just yet, regardless of how talented they are on paper. Give it a year or two, and Cleveland could be a serious threat for the 8th seed and play in tournament spots. But right now, looking at the other teams above them, there's still a fair way out, which is why I have to keep them pretty low at the 12th seed today. I have the Cavs winning 30 to 35 games next season. 
Number 11, the Washington Wizards. The Wizards are an intriguing team to me, and their core group of players, still featuring Bradley Beal, could be easily a playoff caliber side next season. However, I think they just as easily could be a bottom five team in the East. So their final placement is coming down to the play of Beal and his new supporting cast. After losing Russell Westbrook, Washington will inevitably take a hit in the win column regardless, but I think their return package for Russ, plus other additions made to the roster during the offseason, is still pretty decent, and could be the factor that makes or breaks their season. If Kyle Kuzma, Rui Hashimura, Spencer Dinwiddie, etc. can break out and play their roles consistently, the Wizards might be a playoff side. Beal's supporting cast in Washington has generally been poor and he's had to do some serious carry jobs over the years. So if that can change and Beal can maximize his talents in a more effective way, the Wizards may be a smoky to steal a playoff spot. However, if these players struggle, Beal may be in for another frustrating year that sees Washington fall out of the playoff picture once again. Right now though, I have to say that there's just too many unknowns for me to confidently place the Wizards in the 8 as a playoff side, so I've gone a bit more pessimistic here and placed them at 11. I certainly do believe they are capable of being a play-in team or as high as the 8 or 7 seed, but again, the lack of certainty around how their core group of players will play is making me keep them out. I have the Wizards winning 35 to 40 games next season. Number 10, the Indiana Pacers. The Indiana Pacers took an unexpected fall down the standings last season, dropping from the fourth seed in 2020 to out of the playoff picture. With not many improvements to the roster over the off season, I think the Pacers will continue to be a solid, respectable team, but nothing more than that. The combination of Sabonis and Brogdon is good, but with losses to guys like Oladipo, TJ Warren with injury, and more, the Pacers are starting to lose their edge over competitors, and it's resulting in some mediocrity. If Sabonis has another all-star year, Indiana could scrape in to the top eight, but right now, around the 10th seed seems fair to me. I have the Pacers winning 40 to 45 games next season. Number nine. The Charlotte Hornets. The Charlotte Hornets took a leap in 2020 to make the play-in tournament, led by the fantastic play of the Rookie of the Year, LaMelo Ball. With LaMelo expected to take a sophomore leap and the Hornets making some solid off-season moves, such as acquiring Kelly Oubre, they look like a side who will be back in the hunt for the 8th seed as soon as next season. As good as they are though, and with plenty of guys looking like they could be all-star caliber talents as soon as next season, like Lamelo and potentially even Terry Rozier, if he continues his hot form from last year, I just think the Hornets aren't quite ready yet for a playoff entrance. They're on the cusp for sure, maybe a year or two away, and they'll certainly be a lot larger of a threat than a team like, say, Cleveland or Detroit. But again, I think they're just a step or two away from that 8 seed spot. With that said though, I definitely consider the 9 seed as a pass mark for them in 2022, and I have them winning 40 to 45 games next season. Number 8, the Chicago Bulls. The 8 and 7 seeds were a real toss up for me, and I feel like I'm disrespecting both sides a bit by putting them this lower 8, but looking at how tightly contested the top 8 is in the East, Teams from really 3rd to 8 could all end up within a game of each other next season. That's how unpredictable it is right now. So don't try to look at this as me hating on Chicago, because I'm really not. For now though, I've gone with the Chicago Bulls here. And the main reason why that's the case is because we haven't seen them play together yet. A lot of the teams above Chicago, we know what they're capable of. We've seen them do damage in the regular season and postseason. Chicago, as amazing and as fun as they seem on paper, still have a lot of question marks around them, because again, we don't know how the new additions of DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, etc. are going to gel with Zach Levine and co. For all we know, Chicago could leap up the standings and be a top 5 seed out east, or barely be a playoff side, and because of that uncertainty, I feel like it's fair to place them in the middle ground at the 8th seed as much as I'd prefer to have them a little bit higher. Again, this section of the East is so tight, 
third to eighth could be placed in any order and I wouldn't be mad, so please know that this wasn't an easy decision. The Bulls do look stacked with Levine, Vucevic, Lonzo and DeMar DeRozan now, and they're going to certainly be one of the must-watch teams for 2022. I have the Bulls winning 42 to 47 games next season. Number 7, the New York Knicks. The Knicks are not a team to be slept on next season, and while I do have them dropping in the standings, I don't think they should take away from their improvements in the offseason that should see them remain as a playoff side. Last year, the Knicks had a bad offense, especially in the half court. They lacked creation as a whole, as the offense all fell on the shoulders of Julius Randle and Derrick Rose, and those two guys aren't ideal primaries. To fix that, the Knicks have added Kemba Walker, a terrific shot creator with his shooting, ability to create out of the pick and roll, passing talent and more. Add into the mix Emmanuel quickly off the bench, quality off-ball pieces like Evan Fournier and having Julius Randle and Derrick Rose being able to maximize their offensive talents in a less heavily relied upon role, the Knicks have got a pretty amazing offense going into next season to pair alongside their elite defense. All round, the Knicks are looking like a playoff lock, and it's why I can't disrespect them by placing them any lower than 7 today. I have the Knicks winning 42 to 47 games next season. Number 6, the Boston Celtics. The Celtics had a down year in 2021 as they slipped to the 7th seed, but that wasn't really all their fault for the most part. A lack of consistency due to health and safety protocols and injuries tore apart a promising season, and the stars of Tatum, Brown and Kemba never really got into a groove. The offseason the Celtics had though was a real positive one, and they've rebounded really well in my opinion. If guys like Schroeder, Horford, etc., and gel in well to the core of this team, that being Tatum, Brown, and Smart mainly, then the Boston Celtics are certainly looking at a positive season in 2022 and getting themselves back in the title hunt. Six is where I'm placing them today. I feel like it's a bit harder to place them above here considering the other competition in the East. Again, this section is really hard to call, but overall, I think the six seed is fair. I'm not sure if the Eastern Conference Finals are on the cards, but this upcoming season will definitely be a start for the Celtics to get back there. I have the Seas winning 45 to 50 games next season. Number 5, the Philadelphia 76ers. The 76ers are in a bad situation. Ben Simmons isn't going to play for the team anymore. That whole situation has been rinsed out now. And as of when writing, they're still looking for a suitable trade for him. Unfortunately for Philadelphia, unless something drastic happens with Ben, they're undoubtedly going to get worse next season. As bad as Simmons can be offensively sometimes, his incredible playmaking and defensive talents are going to be sorely missed. When a trade does end up happening, it's highly unlikely that the 76ers get something back even near the caliber of Simmons. So I think we can expect to see Philly fall down the standings a bit in 2022. Embiid should remain elite and help the team contend for a top four spot, but at the end of the day, he can't do it all himself. And with the way this roster is currently structured, his talents won't be enough to save the franchise from the damage that Simmons has done. It's a sad reality for Philadelphia, but it's one they need to accept if they're going to be any chance at the championship next season. I have Philly winning 45 to 50 games next season. Number 4, the Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks are coming off a crazy 2021 season where they shocked a lot of fans and proved to everyone their legitimacy as a contender out east. The roster from last season hasn't changed much, but it's not like the quality declined either, so I think the Hawks are a genuine shot of doing something similar to last season. With Trey Young continuing to improve and evolving into a serious superstar in the league, and with the supporting cast around him damn near perfect at this point, it wouldn't surprise me if the Hawks are one of the teams to beat out east next season, which is why I have them at fourth today. I have Atlanta winning 45 to 50 games next season. 
Number 3. The Miami Heat The Heat have rebounded brilliantly from an embarrassing playoff exit in 2021, being arguably the biggest winners of the offseason after they landed Kyle Lowry. For that reason, I have to place the Heat as a top 3 team in the East for next season. They look ready to contend again, and Lowry's experience is going to be incredibly valuable in helping this team try get back to the finals. Ensuring that Bam Adebayo continues his development as one of the better centers in the league, and ensuring that Butler is healthy also, the Heat will definitely be one of the tougher teams to beat out East. They're also going to be extremely fun to watch. The Heat look really exciting going into next season, which is why I have them in third today, winning 50 to 55 games in 2022. Number 2. The Brooklyn Nets Out of any team in the East, I think the Brooklyn Nets are the ones to move on to the NBA Finals. If healthy, they're probably the best team in the NBA, and we got flashes of that last season. However, I'm going to place them in second today, because I think they're more likely to rest players throughout the regular season, and with the status of Kyrie Irving a bit murky right now, he may end up missing some critical games throughout the season that will drop them a bit in the standings. Unfortunately, we can never seem to trust the health of this Nets squad, and while I believe they should be as healthy as they've ever been next season, the front office and coaching staff definitely won't want to take any risks that may cause another short-lived playoff run. For that reason, I have the Nets in second today, but don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to doubt this team at all. A healthy KD, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden is scary as, so definitely be on the lookout for this borderline super team in 2022. I have the Nets winning 50 to 55 games next season. Number 1. The Milwaukee Bucks The Bucks just had to go first. The champions deserve their ranking here. Giannis Antetokounmpo will be as ready as ever to go back to back and taste the joy of winning it all again. We now know the Bucks have a capacity to win it all with their trio of Giannis, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday. My only question is, why can't they do it again? I think they'll be ready to prove it's not a fluke and get it going from day one. These are going to be some exciting times ahead for Bucks fans. We're just going to have to wait and see if they can prove me right. I have the Bucks winning 55 to 60 games next season. And that will conclude my standings predictions for the Eastern Conference. To recap, I have the Bucks finishing first, followed by Brooklyn in second, Miami in third, and the Atlanta Hawks in fourth. To round out the rest of the playoffs, I have Philadelphia, Boston, New York, and Chicago. Then from 9th to 15th, I have the Hornets in 9th, Pacers, Wizards, Cavaliers, Raptors, Pistons, and lastly, the Orlando Magic. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think of my standings for the Eastern Conference, and also be sure to drop your own predictions down below in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe, but with that being said, I am out. Peace.